Um, briefly, before we get started and, and kind of get into the meat and potatoes of this webinar, I want to go over a couple of key points for you. If you have any questions throughout this session, uh, please type them into the GoToWebinar chat box, and we'll address as many of those questions during the Q&A section toward the end of the webinar. And uh, the webinar should last somewhere around 30 minutes. And yes, we are recording it for uh, those of you who want to rewatch it or share it at a later time. Just note, it normally takes us about 48 hours to post the webinar up on our YouTube channel and on our website. Just kind of be patient with us in that regard. Um, now for the overview. During this session, we are going to define what customer self-service actually is. Uh, we're going to list and discuss the top benefits it produces, and then we'll take a look at the very intuitive and functional Happy Fox user interface where your customers can track their support tickets, refer to an expert knowledge base that you built, and engage in community forums hosted by you as well, all within the same service portal. All right. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with all of this, let me define self-service and why it can be extremely beneficial to you and your business. All right. Customer self-service is an online support center that allows customers to access information and perform routine tasks without requiring any assistance from your customer service representatives. In other words, you're enabling your customers to search and find their own answers so that they can educate themselves and build transparency in your company and your products so that they become as self-sufficient as possible, all while you build your customer satisfaction rating. All right, so uh, I wanna go through a couple of statistics with you guys uh, so that we can get a better idea of where the industry stands on this particular area. So the first one is, let me ask you, what percentage of customers do you think would use a self-service option? Just kind of get a percentage in your head. Well, a recent survey was taken and roughly 70% of customers expected a self-service option and 91% of those customers say that they would use a self-service option um, if it existed. Uh, therefore, companies ignoring this changing need or requirement of their customers are running a substantial risk of losing business to the competitors who may be already implementing a strategy. Okay. And now the next metric is kind of fun because it comes from us over here at Happy Fox, actually. And the question is, how many of your tickets could actually be answered using a self-service portal? I mean, how feasible is this? Well, a couple of years ago, when we first implemented our knowledge base section here at Happy Fox, we noticed that 67 to 70 percent of all of our production tickets were related to customers not knowing how certain features worked or how to set up certain settings. And those are perfect examples of easy to answer questions using a knowledge base. And after uh, the knowledge base implementation we had, we noticed a, a, a considerable drop in support volume. Okay, so now you all might be wondering, what are some more specific advantages for you uh, for investing your time or your company's time, money, and energy here. Well, giving your customers this ability will open your support channel up for a number of immediate improvements, okay? Notice I said immediate improvements. So let's break a few of those down. Um, the first thing and probably the most crucial point here really is with self-service uh, and providing a self-service center, you have immediately shifted from reactive support to proactive support. And what this means is you have already answered many future questions that your customers might develop. For example, a common question over here for us is uh, how to reset my password. Well, rather than waiting for your customers to ask, uh, you can be proactive and just give them the ability to find that answer before the issue ever occurs. Uh, otherwise, you can wait for each and every time that, uh, that question arises and then provide a reactive answer, which doesn't only consume your time, but your customers will also have to wait for a response and they may need urgent assistance at that point in time and you might not be able to provide that. 
And also, this will allow your agents the ability to focus on the most crucial tickets at hand for customers with more complicated or serious needs. Second, your support channel is now opened to 20 uh, it's now open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week and no holidays. Plus there's really no additional overhead involved. And uh, you can support your customers in all of their respective languages. Uh, third, you have effectively reduced your overall support volume, which directly translates into revenue for a number of reasons. Uh, I'm sure you guys could all kind of create your own list here, but to list some basic examples, uh, like I stated before, your staff agents can focus on more crucial tickets and resolve more serious issues before they escalate to the point where you can lose a customer or lose a sale. Uh, you'll potentially have less support agents, therefore less managers, and therefore uh, much less working uh, man hours. Fourth, you will have the ability to educate and engage your customers, which equates to faster resolution time, overall customer satisfaction, and as a result, longer lasting relationships with your customers, and they will be much more apt to becoming brand advocates for you. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, there you go. And lastly, for some of you bigger and faster growing clients, your customer support will become much more scalable regardless of your growth factor because so many of your customers will now be able to help themselves or even help each other. Okay. So now we've covered some of the fundamentals on why you would need and want a self-service option. Let's see how Happy Fox's self-service uh, support center can help you achieve all of your support goals. Okay. So first we're going to check out the customer support portal as a whole. And this is your one-stop place to shop for your customers because you're going to be able to give them access here to uh, managing, uh, raising and managing their own tickets. Uh, they'll be able to search through your knowledge base here, and they're also going to be able to engage in the community forums, all within this same place. All right. So I want to jump into uh, a demo briefly of our customer support portal. So really quick, the first thing I want to mention here is I have a number of tabs open up here. But after creating a Happy Fox account, you're going to have two domains. All right. So one of them, this is going to be, you're going to have a, a customer support portal. So this is a demo account that I've set up, JL Company. This is my customer support portal. And you can see uh, my URL is jlcompany.happyfox.com. And then one of your domains is going to be your staff portal, which I have here. And the only difference in my URL is this slash staff tag that you can see right here. Okay, So it's a small difference in the URL, but a big difference in functionality. Now, I'm going to be jumping between these two tabs a lot. So I just kind of wanted to point that out so you guys uh, don't get confused. Okay, So your customers will jump onto your support center. Well, they have, will have a couple of options depending on how you have customized this support page here. Okay. So also note this, this page is fully customizable and you could even use HTML or JavaScript or CSS code if you wanted to create some more personal branding. Uh, let me show you actually a couple of examples how uh, some of our customers have uh, branded or customized their support portal. So. Uh, Warner Brothers has kind of simplified simplified their page and added some of their personal branding. They've taken away the ability to create a ticket to the public. So basically, in order to raise a request with them, you're going to have to log in and have an account with them. Okay. And the next one I want to show you really fast is kind of different. Cipher Crescent here. They have a banner on their page. They've added a nice image in the background and separated their new ticket form. And they've given anybody the ability really to create a ticket or you can log in as well. Um, and briefly, let me show you where this can be done in the customer support portal really fast. So I'm gonna jump onto my staff portal of my demo account here. I'm gonna click on the manage tab, then this general sub tab, and then I'm gonna open these support center settings here. So really fast, let me show you, you could change the name of your support center simply by uh, typing in this free text field here. You have some drop downs options to uh, set the landing page or how your customers will have to log in. And then this is where you can customize your page using your CSS code. You're just going to paste that code into here. Uh, you can also paste your JavaScript or HTML code into here. 
And you could create a, a simple support banner like we saw in Cypher Crescent, which uh, I'll create one for you really fast so you can see. And um, the you have a couple of other options. And then you have these visibility preferences that I want to go over here for you. And, and I want to go over these first two options here, really. What these are basically are going to allow your customers to view your knowledge base without logging in. And it's going to allow your customers to view your forums without logging in. So in other words, you're going to be creating a public knowledge base and a public forums just by checking these boxes here. Okay. So now I'm going to save these settings and I want to show you the difference on my support portal here. Um, now that I have reset these settings. So let me jump to my support portal and you could say this is the, the generic support portal that everybody's going to have. And I've already kind of created some forums and some, some demo knowledge base articles. And therefore, I'm going to refresh this browser so those settings take effect. And you're going to be able to see now that I have my banner that I created, just using that free text field. I have my forums link up here, so I could click and check out some forums. And then I have some access, public access, that is, to these knowledge base articles. And... Um, Therefore, anybody who jumps onto my support portal URL is going to be able to access all of those things. Um, the next thing I want to notice, I want you to notice really fast, is that anybody can create a ticket on my support portal as well. They're just going to click this link. They're going to fill out this basic form here provided and submit their ticket. Uh, I want to show you guys, however, what happens when a customer logs in to a support portal and creates a ticket, okay? So I'm just gonna click log in here. And if your customers are first time users, they're gonna click this register button and fill out the basic information here in order to get some credentials to log into your site. So I'm gonna log into uh, my site here as a demo customer that I've already set up. And now that I'm logged in, it's very easy to navigate, notice through all three of the features all right so i have my knowledge base feature i have my forum feature and then i also have the ability to manage my tickets okay so really fast the advantage to logging in for your customers here is that they're going to be able to manage their tickets using this uh interface right here rather than just seeing any email replies back and forth which is also an option your customers could log in here and they're going to be able to manage their tickets uh, with an identical view that your support agents are going to have um, and really fast I've, I've got this demo ticket here but let's create another one i want to show you guys uh, what it looks like on both sides really fast so all i'm going to do is as a customer i'm going to create a new ticket by clicking the new ticket tab here and I'm just going to select the category. We'll just say I'm going to create a customer support ticket. And this is a urgent issue for me. And uh, I could just kind of, I'll just say, this is a, a webinar test ticket. And I'll just, I could use my rich uh, text editor here just to say, uh, I'll just type in test. So now I'm going to create my ticket as a customer. And once that's done, I'm going to go back to my pending tickets page, and we see the, the ticket that we had already opened, uh, or I mean issued, and now we have our new ticket that we can manage here as well. Okay. And on my staff portal, I could click on the tickets view and, and manage this ticket in the same fashion. Okay. So you could see the similarities between the two portals here. I just wanted to point that out really fast. And... Um, we're going to go into how to reply to this ticket uh, in a little bit, but that's it for the, the support portal demo and, and logging in. It's really easy, right? Well, the next thing we're going to go over is the knowledge base, which is even easier, to be honest with you. So let me jump back to my PowerPoint really fast and uh, go over some, some key points here. So first of all, what is a knowledge base? A knowledge base is a store of information or data that you can query for answers, basically. Okay. And with Happy Fox, it's very easy to create and manage your knowledge base. It's very easy to search through the content on that knowledge base. And you can also set up external and internal articles, uh, which means you can set up separate knowledge base for your employees in addition to the knowledge base you have for your customers. 
Uh, you can easily share these articles on social networking sites, and you can also see your knowledge base analytics, which shows your most viewed or most helpful articles according to your customers. So now we're going to jump into um, a demo again of the knowledge base application. And in this case, I want to show you our actual Happy Fox support portal, uh, where you can have you have public access to our forums, as well as our knowledge base information here at support.happyfox.com. So if you guys ever needed support from us, this is where you're going to go and, and get that information. So uh, the first thing to notice here is this search bar. You can type your question into this search bar, and it's going to pull up some keywords in articles. So let's say, for example, I forgot my password, and I want to uh, find my own answer to that rather than reaching out to a support agent. I could just type it in here, and I've got a list of articles that kind of relate. I'm just going to click on this manage password. It seems the most pertinent. And now I'm going to read through this knowledge base article uh, as a customer. And I can see that you know there's some text here. I can, They've added some images here. So you, you can add images and screenshots in your knowledge base articles. And also notice you can even um, add videos if you have like tutorials uh, and so on and so forth into these knowledge base articles. So you could give all the information possible to your customers. And once they read through this information, they're going to be able to select whether this article was helpful or not. They're going to be able to see and view some related articles if necessary. If none of this information uh, was pertinent and they still wanted to submit a ticket, they could simply do that by clicking on this. And then uh, you have the option to share these articles on a social network, which you could just click on the link here, enter in your credentials, and uh, share your article. Very simple. All right, so now let's go back to the home page really fast and notice how the knowledge base is organized. And to go back to the home page, I could just click on the little Happy Fox Company logo here. So the knowledge base is organized by listing these top articles first, okay? And then the sections here are listed all in alphabetical order. And you could see that, you know, there's a number of sections, subsections, and articles within those sections, okay? So um, I guess let, let's click really fast on uh, account setup. And again, really fast, notice you're gonna have the, the most viewed articles that pertain to this particular section, and then you're gonna have all of the uh, other articles in that section as well for seamless navigation. And it's as simple to set up as it is to use. Uh, so FYI, we already hosted a webinar on how to build an effective knowledge base, which you could find on our website or YouTube channel, but let me cover the basics briefly. So let me jump back into my um, demo staff portal here, and I'm gonna click on this knowledge base tab. And I've created some examples uh, but I want to go through how to uh, create an entirely new section and knowledge base art, uh, um, article for, with, for you guys. So in this case, let me just click on sections and I can add a new section here. And this one, we're just going to call this webinar training. I've done this once before, so it'll auto populate for me. I can make this section a subsection of any of these existing uh, ones, but I'm just going to make this uh, section parent section on its own. I can add an internal description here if I wanted to, describing the section. And then I'm going to associate uh, which categories I want to share this knowledge base section with. So I could select all the categories or any combination of these categories. Create a section. And once this section is created, I can add an article to it. Okay, so I'll just click on this new article button. And in this case, again, I'm just going to say, oops, I'm just going to say this is a webinar training and your slug text will automatically populate. We could spell right. You could add some more there if you wanted to. And then you could add your content, which you can just say, I'll just say something real basic. Here is a knowledge base article. And you could simply add your add a uh, image, which I have got a screenshot on my desktop from your computer, wherever that may be. I'll just upload this image on here, insert. 
And now I've got my new knowledge base article that I can publish. But first, uh, I want to make sure I associate this knowledge base to the right category, which we'll just add it to the category we just created. And again, I have to se select my visibility preferences. So this is where you're going to determine whether you want your knowledge base articles to be public or internal, basically. By default, your articles are going to be internal. So I'm going to uncheck this box so that everybody has access to view it. And then I could add tags to this article uh, for easy searchability. And I'll separate all those tags by a comma. I can just say uh, there's a test, webinar, training. And now I'm going to publish this article here. So now that I've, I've uh, published this article, I want to show you guys the end result really fast on the customer side of things, OK? So I'm going to go back to my knowledge base as a customer. And notice I have a new section here on my knowledge base that I can click on. And I can view the new article that we just created, which is very basic. But you can see the content here. And I can see the tags that we created, and I have the same functionality, basically. I could say whether this was helpful or not, share it on some social media sites. You could see how many views the article had, when the article was created, so on and so forth. And, and, and that's the knowledge base basics. It's, it's really simple to do um, and provide some pretty powerful information for your customers. And the next thing uh, we're going to take a look at is, is the last feature of the day, which is our community forms, and quite possibly the easiest feature of the day, where you can build and cultivate your customer community. Uh, you can create customer-driven support here. And your forms are also going to be able to be viewed or shared on some social networking sites. OK, so first, we're going to jump into a, another demonstration of this. And I just want to show you guys really fast how to create a topic in your forums post. So I'm on my customer portal. I'm going to click on my forums here. And I have a number of different topics here. And um, we're going to kind of edit this topic and create another one. I'll show you how to do this in the staff portal briefly. So what I'm going to do, again, I'm going to, in order to customize, click on my Manage tab. And then I'm going to click on this Forums sub tab here. And we could simply click Add a New Topic. So. And, and I'm going to fill out this basic information in order to add a new topic. But for demo purposes, I've already created one here, this webinar forum. So I'm just going to edit it really fast so I can show you how simple it is to create. So we're going to add the name of our topic. We're going to select whether we're going to make the topic uh, public or private, basically, with these drop downs and who could reply to posts or who can view post. And then I'm going to associate the appropriate categories again to it. And once that's done, I'll save my settings. OK, since this one's already created, I'm just going to cancel out of here, show you guys what it looks like on the uh, support portal. So once you're finished, you're going to save those settings, jump back over to your customer portal now, and you're going to see you, uh, your, your new topic, which was already created here, and, and somebody has added a reply. So as a customer, I have the ability to add a post to some of these topics or reply to any of these. All you're going to do is customer, you could come in here and say, you know what, I want to add a reply on the training forum. And we'll just say this is a test reply. And we'll say, uh, my reply will just say something simple, webinar test. Then I'm going to submit my post. And net people are going to be able to, to um, add a reply to my post. You could add some tags for easy searchability on the post. And then also, I could subscribe or unsubscribe from my post here as well when I start to add some replies just by highlighting this star. And just kind of want to go over those basic things with you. And uh, again, you could share these on social media sites. So if I go back to my home page really fast, so I could open my forums. And somebody has replied, and I could share this reply on my social networking sites if I wanted to just by clicking on that button. And there it is. Um, that concludes the demo of our features today. We covered a lot of information, but it's, it's really simple to get in there once you guys start playing around with it and setting it all up. And it's very powerful uh, once you do set it up for your customers. Uh, and, and lastly, I want to uh, kind of tie this all up and reiterate a couple of points. So 
Ultimately, what we've covered today is with the ability to provide online support material, it is no longer enough to offer quality products at and services at a good price. Like You must provide an outstanding support experience, which really translates into those long-term relationships with your customers that we're all shooting for. Uh, part of the reality of customer support is that the same questions will be asked over and over again. But... Happy Fox's self-service features allow agents as well as customers to very easily build a database of questions and answers in order to solve issues in the most efficient manner for everybody involved. Uh, and once you set these features up, you're, you're going to really start reap the immediate advantages that it provides. And, and the last thing to state really fast, I'm sure many of you have already done this, but if anybody hasn't, I just want to say that uh, we offer a 30-day free trial. You could just go to happyfox.com, click on this free trial button here, and uh, enter the basic information. There's no credit card information needed. Uh, there's no obligations. You just, at the end of the 30 days, will shut down your account unless you wanted to continue uh, your service. We just want you guys to jump on there, start playing around with it, and, of course, reach out to us so we could guide you along the way. Uh, all right. So allow me to thank you all again for sitting here and listening to me. And uh, if you guys have any questions, we're going to jump into the Q&A portion of the webinar now. So feel free to ask away uh, so we can answer your questions. And we're also going to have our CEO, Shaul and Jane, he'll be here helping us answer a lot of those questions as well. Hi guys, thank you uh, Jonathan for the wonderful webinar and uh, so we're ready to take questions. The questions can be anything about the knowledge base, the customer portal, the forums, uh, it could be about a future feature that we are likely to release, uh, something that you want to see next in our product. Uh, uh, so we're also open to feedback and uh, so I have a question here on uh, so can we embed images and videos on the articles? Of course you can, and I, I think we showed that in part of the webinar. So you can actually embed images. You can put in YouTube videos, videos from Vistia, and they all, video is a great, great format to have along with your knowledge base. It makes people uh, actually get the answers in a much, much uh, uh, friendlier format, and it, it's, it's a great success. We've been building videos ourselves. It's been a great success. So we strongly recommend people to kind of uh, come in and actually build videos. Uh, and for those of you who want to ask questions, there's uh, the questions tab on the right-hand side of your GoToWebinar area. You'd be able to add, ask questions there. So, uh, okay, so I have another question here is about uh, uh, the CSS uh, modification. So, uh, okay, so we, we can actually, yes, we do allow CSS modification, and uh, uh, that kind of helps you to build uh, a, a completely customizable knowledge base and, uh, you know, kind of really match your website look and feel. So, the next question. Uh, so, any plans to integrate with the uh, uh, QuickBooks, uh, yeah, QuickBooks, and basically we currently integrate with uh, FreshBooks, and uh, we have plans, and we uh, we'd like to uh, work with QuickBooks as well. So we we are open to that integration. Uh, we will reach out to you, and uh, thanks, Randy, for asking that. So we'll reach out to you and share some of our internal documentation on what we are planning to do with the QuickBooks integration, and we can kind of uh, get your feedback on that. So, uh, let's see. Okay, so what are the metrics? I have another question. What are the metrics on KB articles and forums uh, that can really help? So one of the key metrics that we really provide is uh, whether people found that article useful or not. Again, uh, you have that green tick mark or a red cross, making very visual for people to give you the feedback. And once the feedback is in, it's basically shown in the admin panel where you can actually see whether people like the, the answer that you have on board or not. And uh, the other important metric that you have is actually the view count. So you can tell uh, which of the 
which of the articles were viewed more. So if you see something that is viewed more often, you want to go and revise that and make sure that uh, it is perfect. The answer has all the important points and kind of optimize that because that is really what is the number one or number two question people uh, look at when they come to your uh, website. Wait, so uh, another thing that I want to point out is we are introducing a multilingual knowledge base. So you'd be able to maintain knowledge bases in multiple languages uh, and do it in a very, very easy manner. We also have a multi-brand functionality where essentially if you have multiple brands, let's say you are an e-commerce store selling shoes, have multiple websites targeting men, women, uh, and kids independently, and the whole support team is the same, and you just want to make sure that uh, the back end is the same and the front end is customized for every single brand because they are all uh, different target audiences, uh, then you can basically do that. So you can actually use multi-brand and have individual knowledge bases for each of those brands. Um, now, okay, is there a way to disable the feature which tells the user how many, so I have a question from Kyle here, uh, ability to disable number of times an article was viewed. Uh, yes, you can do that. You can actually just turn it off by making a quick CSS hack. Uh, with that CSS hack, you should be able to remove the view count from being visible. And so you would basically use a uh, display none like a, a, a tag to make sure that it becomes invisible for general users and whenever you want to turn it on you can basically go and remove that CSS hack. So that, that's a great way if you're just starting off you don't want to show that it's not being viewed enough or you just want to hide uh, that data for any reason you can actually do that and you can also remove on the same note you can also remove the social media links so let's say not your knowledge base is not about something that you want to have people, users actually share it on social media, so you can actually uh, remove that. And when is, okay, when is the multi-language going to be ready? It's actually currently in testing. We have identified a few bugs, which is getting fixed in our staging server, so we want to make sure it's perfect, it's really, uh, it's really ready for prime time, and I think we are likely to ship this uh, end of November, early December is our uh, immediate target, and uh, we can keep you updated uh, in person also about that. So we'll send out uh, an email to all of you guys uh, letting you know about the availability of our uh, multilingual support. So uh, one of the key things that you notice the way our knowledge base is designed is uh, it's very, very search friendly. So uh, the, the most important thing that you see on the, on the support portal really is the search functionality. And in the world of people where every, everything starts with search, it is kind of important that users actually, uh, uh, they, are, they, are not, they don't know your structure, the way you formatted the knowledge base. So it's much better that they actually just type in what they want. And we actually get, do a very good job auto-completing uh, so we actually suggest things uh, which can actually be uh, uh, the real question that they're going to ask. So this is a great way the search and the auto suggest, just like the Google auto suggest, helps your users uh, get all that info without really having to look in through your extensive structured knowledge base. And we also organize the top articles, like we have mentioned in the webinar, which make sure that the top winners, the, the questions that are asked more, becomes very, very easily available on the top. And you don't have to program this all the time. It automatically sees which is the top article and changes that on an up-to-the-minute basis. So, uh, I, I have one more question and uh, do KB articles help in SEO and uh, yeah so we do uh, uh, if you notice when creating the article we had the slug text so basically you can really customize the URL make it both user friendly and search friendly and uh, uh, we basically let you kind of customize that add tags. tags adding tags is a great way to increase your visibility on search engines and uh, all our knowledge base is designed to be SEO friendly. It's more cleanly laid out. Uh, it, it has a huge impact on your SEO. And it, it's, it's a great way to bring in your customers. Your customers might not even come to your support portal, might just end up searching on Google. And you want to make sure that they land on your 
help desk, your knowledge base, and get their answer instead of landing on a third party website. So you want to make sure you have a knowledge base which has all the info, it is very well written and tagged, uh, and brings that search engine visibility. So I have another question from Amber. Uh, it is, where is the setup of the knowledge base portal? So, uh, so the setup of the knowledge base portal is on your staff panel. So you notice I'm in jlcompany.happyfox.com slash staff. You'll be essentially go to the knowledge base tab. Uh, you have the ability to see what uh, set, uh, what sections you have available uh, and you can go actually create new sections, see how many articles are there in each of the sections and basically on the sections you have articles so you'll also be able to see a list of articles you can jump to a specific section so we created it during the webinar we created an article under the webinar training section and you'll be able to see that, you'll be able to view it, edit it or delete it and so this is where you actually uh, manage your articles so I hope that answers the question and uh, so one other important thing about the the portal here itself is that you also have help on the right hand side so you can actually get some quick help here uh, and uh, it's it's designed in a way where uh, you can search within the knowledge base articles give you a overall metric on how many articles you have and as you come in here so for example I talked about being able to edit the most viewed articles so you can actually find this here and when you log into your portal you say I want to optimize this creating roles because this seems to be the number one article you can go in there you can say edit and you can actually start editing this article so that's uh, that's pretty much the managed side which we uh, covered and let me see if I have any other question uh, so uh, also on a website you can actually find information about knowledge base and see more of customer samples by just going to uh, happyfox.com and we have a link in the bottom for knowledge base so this essentially would uh, help you uh, see what are the things that you can do what are the kind of uh, companies that have used a knowledge base and uh, also the most important thing about knowledge base and forums is both are responsive so it will actually work on tablets it would work on iPhones and uh, any any browser on the smartphone so it's it's a great way to uh, make sure that customers whom you reply uh, over email, they're checking the mail all the time on the phone, and if they click on a knowledge base article, they're still getting a very user friendly way of reading it. So we keep it responsive. So I have another question from John uh, uh, Is there a way to, f in the future, to modify reports in future and b basically compare two categories in one report? Okay, so this is off topic, but I'll still answer that. So uh, a modify reports so you can of course modify reports and uh, you can right now not do comparison of two categories but I think that's a very good suggestion we'll uh, we'll take that feedback and see if we can make it part of our reporting segment where you are able to compare two specific categories the only way to do it right now is would be via the API or actually take an export uh, of each of those categories and actually uh, do a pivot in Excel uh, and, and basically we can help you doing that as well so it's just a couple of steps more but you should be able to do that perfect so uh, I have one more question here uh, it's uh, okay so the question is about customizing the URL so I don't want to have something dot happyfox.com so can I customize the URL so yes in some of our plans we actually let you customize so it could be support.yourdomain.com so you can actually uh, do that customization uh, and uh, uh, you, you can kind of uh, make sure that uh, it, it reflects your branding both by modifying the logo, color and uh, including the domain name. So and one of the quick and easy way to put your uh, uh, knowledge base on your website is actually use our embed widget so this is an example of an embed widget you see on the screen uh, it can be basically plugged into your app it can be plugged into your website you could be plugged anywhere uh, where you expect a customer to have a question and instead of occupying the whole space uh, it will just lie as a tab on a side of the screen and customers can actually interact with that, click on that, and get exposed to your knowledge base. So if you already have a well-done knowledge base with lots of articles, uh, you want to actually make use of this widget to make it uh, present everywhere and uh, be available 
on a single click. So uh, I think we have some more questions, but we are kind of running out of time. Uh, I would want to wrap up this uh, session and uh, bring Jonathan back in the scene. And we, we'd like to do more webinars. We'd like more feedback. We can expand on certain topics that uh, you like. Uh, we can cover, uh, do more hands-on uh, sessions explaining uh, detail in a functionality. We can do more on CSS customization and so on. So we really uh, like your feedback. So please send us an email to support at happyfox.com uh, or just feel free to reach out to me directly at sj, that's sj at happyfox.com.